My name's Yusuf, I'm 29 years old and I'm from Nottingham. My name's Darren Campbell, um, I'm 46 years old. Um, I'm currently living in Slough at the moment. Hi, my name's Inan, um, I'm from South West London. My name's Jamil Anwar, um, I'm from East London and I'm about to be 26 soon. I think in the beginning, when someone talked about mental health, I saw it as you're probably depressed, you've got a problem, um, you may be suffering from anxiety. And I've always said that as a manager, um, there's an issue, you find a solution to it. So when someone comes to me and says, I'm, I think I'm suffering from mental health, for me it was, what's the issue? Okay, all you need to do is X, Y, Z. That's what it was for me. I didn't really see it as anything big. My male relative and everything in general, they all had their own particular mental health. And for me, we don't really talk about it. We don't really um, sit down and have a dialogue about it. And we're all you know, struggling by our own stuff. So because of the thing I went through and because of what I see people around me, I realise mental health is a really, really big problem that we're having at the moment. I've seen friends, family, colleagues at work suffer from things like depression, anxiety, stress from work, uh, break of relationships, bereavement, um, loss of a loved one. Um, Sickness, self body image, eating disorders, and the list goes on. I know how much it's impacted myself. I know how much it's impacted people around me, um, especially men's mental health. Um, at my initial stage of my mental health journey, I didn't want to talk to no one. My background was basically growing up in church. Um, I had to go to church four days a week. Um, didn't basically get any help or support when it came to. Um, studying, homework or anything like that at all whatsoever. Um, it was very difficult because there was a lot of racism that was going on within my school as well. So there was only like three black people that was in the school at the time, so that was very difficult for myself. Um, tried to tell my mum, but she didn't really understand it at all whatsoever. And it was just a very difficult time growing up and it's been very hard for me to find myself up until now, I would say. When I was in uni, I was feeling, um, I was in, well, far away from home. Uh, I had no friends around me because a lot of them had graduated prior. So I was in Manchester alone at the time. And I just felt overwhelming pressure with uni, studying, family, and everything got on top of me. And I did start going through uh, ish, like phases of mental health issues. I'm the first in the family to go to university outside London. And it was a very, it was a very different journey to the point where because I'm a hearing impaired person who never like me, I know anyone from outside that who other people who are auto deaf just like me. So I'm here in a new environment, new place, you know, making new friends out there and so on. Uh, because of that, I don't know how to communicate. I don't know how to socialise with people out, who are outside London, even people who are not Muslim just like me. And I think it got to the point where it built up, where I don't like it, all that pressure going on to me. I've been through a divorce and. It, it, it wasn't something I planned for. Um, I grew up with the belief that you're married, you marry someone and you're married for life. Um, things happen and people you know, go in different directions. Um, it turned out to be quite messy um, and quite abusive in ways. Um, financially ended up me being in a bad place, you know, emotionally in a bad place. And as a, as a male, I think we don't hate like to admit it and we like to man up to the situation, but um, it does impact you at the end of the day. Going through it now myself, um, I've realised how big it is because um, it put me into hospital did. Um, I was in A&E. Um, it was a very difficult um, time for myself. Um, suffering from anxiety, stress. Um, I had something called global sensation where it feels like something's stuck in your throat. Suffering from um, acid reflux at the same time as well. Um, shaking, hot flushes. Um, it was really crazy. It, it can do so much like to you as a person that you kind of don't know what to do and where to go. And I thought it was all physical, but it was it's it's all mental. That's what it is for myself. So it was just uh, it was a compromise agreement between me and my parents, where they say, okay, you can go outside, you can like study outside London, but you have to come home every weekend. So because of that that added to the point where my socialising skill wasn't really that great because I don't get to, I'd have time to socialise with people, I'd have time to study. And I think that put on too much uh, burden on me, where I go through different, um, where I go through any 
different point of mental health issues that are going through, like anxiety, depression, and so on. And I think um, I think that got to the point where I, I put on so much weight, and I started losing confidence in myself. I thought, you know, hating myself, I didn't like myself, and everything. I don't like what I'm going through. I, you know, I felt, and because and because of that, I failed a year at university. And I do remember when I was walking down the street after coming out of um, A and E, and as I was walking, I just had tears flowing down my eyes and I thought, what the hell's going on? And I'm not a person to cry for anything at all. I'm that kind of tough guy, a typical man. Um, and I just thought, I need to basically get help. I need to basically sort, basically get to the root cause of whatever it is. And I remember um, going to my sister's a couple of days after that. And I was sitting down at the dinner table um, eating and I just kept to rub my head. And my sister was going to me, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know, I just feel something's gonna happen. So I, was, I stood up, was walking around, and um, I just stood there and just dropped to the floor, just started bursting out in tears. And I just said, I can't take it anymore. It was a really tough moment for me. It was really tough for my sisters to see that because my sisters have always known me to be the ones to look after them. I initially struggled uh, seeking for help, uh, always being a male. It reached a point where I felt like I had to do something about it and if I don't do something about it I'm just going to be stuck there and not move on from things and um, at that point I did you know seek out help, um, spoke to my GP. Um, I didn't even know what the difference was between a psychiatrist and a therapist to be honest about it and it's been a learning journey and quite enlightening in that sense of the way and I do speak to a therapist and I don't see it any being any different than speaking to uh, someone who's, you know, I had professional coaching in terms of work. It's not anything different. I had to tell a couple of my friends um, what was going on because I felt that I needed to talk about it because I always said to myself, if I ever give anyone advice, I need to basically take the same advice that I would give someone else. So I basically said, you know what, I need to basically refer myself to a counsellor which I basically did. I need to make sure that I'm walking to work rather than driving to work. Um, I had to make sure that I was going to the gym as well. Um, my friends were so supportive and I've always said that during your tough times, this is when you know who your true friends are. And I think that was a moment where I realised I had more friends than I thought I actually did. It's okay what you went through. You know, everyone going through all of it. Uh, you know, but it's important that you communicate because that's the um, that's the most important part I would tell my young daughter to communication. So do not um, be afraid to reach out to someone because you've got your family around you. You've got um, people that you know that you can connect to. So I would tell my young daughter to speak out to your family members about it. Do not keep it to yourself. Hard as it may be or however inferior it may make you feel, talking to someone does actually help. I make time for myself. Um, I have some rituals that I put in place to make sure that I stay positive on a daily basis and on a long-term basis, daily. I try to get up early in the morning, do a bit of few breathing exercises, uh, read the news, make time for myself. I call it me time for 15 minutes before even doing anything else. With your mental state, it affects your whole life, it affects your perspective and thing, it affects your body image and everything, it affects your thinking and your way of, the way of life. For me, it was a sort of a journey over the few months uh, following that, you know, divorce and breakup to learn about who I am as a person. And good things will always happen as, if, as long as you stay positive. If you don't go through those emotions and heal yourself, you're going to keep them built up uh, inside of you. And what that's going to do is just brew and brew. If you don't let it out, you're not going to recover. Like, and you want to start the recovery before you start going into something else because you don't want to not recover, jump into another relationship and those and then when you're in that other relationship, uh, emotions from the previous relationship come back and they actually can be detrimental to that current relationship. So before anything else, get all your emotions out. And again, like I say, um, it's trying to look at the positive aspects on life. I know whatever happened, it happened. And you know, you can't, you know, just dwell on it because it's better to move on from it. And just you know, understand that, you know, you should forget and forgive. And you know, um, whatever happened, it happened and that there's always going to be another person, there's always going to be an, an, another route for you to take and so on. So I try not to fall on it and I try to move on from it. If you don't love yourself, no one else is going to love you. That's another saying that I have. Make sure, like, it's just like saying, like, oh yeah, look after yourself, 
pick yourself up uh, and um, dust yourself off. And if you need to, improve yourself. I knew all the time I was looking for something. I didn't know what that something was. I didn't know if it was to do with religion or if it was someone or a place to be. I knew I was looking for something. Um, I think working in Hounslow was probably a blessing for myself um, because I met a lot of nice people around there. Um, they was basically just telling me about what it's like being a Muslim. I wasn't interested at the time because I was more or less against it. Um, but just watching them, how they was living their life and how they talked about and how they did things as well, I just found that it was really beautiful for myself. Hmm, appearance. Who doesn't struggle with appearance? Uh, I think that's something we all have. Uh, the same reason, you know, uh, uh, even I've, I've seen my grandmother, for example, you know, apply makeup. Because everyone wants to look good, for, you know, in how they, how they look. Um, and I think it's the same with males today as well. Like men, you know, like to take care of themselves and it's quite important because equally as being a man, honestly, you're looking for the same on the other side as well, that you want the partner to look good for you. So that pressure is always there. And, and, and I think what I've learned is that if you keep waiting for a time to form that perfect image uh, of, you know, from model from, the, from a cover of a magazine, you're never going to get there. But what you can do is definitely is work on your mental health, be happy, be positive and that glow, glow comes across to the other person. Just like, would you consider talking to someone who feels really low in mood and is slouching forward? Who doesn't feel um, the need for having to put up, a, let's say, a persona. As hard as it may be, sometimes you've got to do it. Breathe up your chest and go for it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Show yourself, try and be confident. Just like body image and everything, that's something that I've, you know, struggled and everything. And also with the fact that I'm hearing impaired, that's something I will have to deal with. But I know, you know, if, you know, people, you know, if you're going to have to go through that issue that you're having, you can just, you know, work yourself hard on, you know, improving yourself and just put, and, you know, just make effort, you know, that's all I can say. I, I know I shouldn't do this, but I never disclose the fact that I'm hearing impaired on my profile. But I do disclose it when we, um, when the conversation going very well between myself and another person, and I'll tell them about it. But sometimes, you know, um, they would not like that because, you know, I never told them another thought and they did not appreciate that. Sometimes they're very accepting and, you know, they would like to go forward. But I know with being here impaired, it, it, like I said, it's something that I'm a bit embarrassed about, something that, you know, I have to deal with. I think it's a really great platform for people to meet each other and uh, get to know each other in a nice way. And uh, if done things properly and with respect and, you know, kindness and politeness in place, um, I, I don't doubt it's going to be a good place for me to be in the future there as well to find someone. As being um, a revert, um, newly you can probably say, um, it has been a challenge um, due to um, culture, um, colour, um, having some kids as well at the same time. So it's been very challenging for myself to find someone. Um, I will say time will come and Inshallah, I will basically definitely find someone sooner or later, I would say. Some people have a lot easier mental health journey, some people have a lot harder mental health journey. Uh, and some people are with us today, which is nice to hear, but unfortunately there's people who've not made it with us. I think mental health is the centre, is at the centre of your existence. Your body can, cannot function well if your brain is, is not in harmony with your body. Um, and I, I think it's really important to keep that in mind. Mental health comes in different shapes and forms. And it, it sometimes is not even visible you know, to you and it's creeping up behind your back. So how I keep myself positive is looking what I achieved, look what I've done, and keep myself busy and always talk about it with my family member. And that's what I always do. I always talk about my problem to my sister. Cause I'm glad I have my sister with me. Speaking about it is very important for everyone and for me it needs to be spoken about a lot more.